I knew him before he was um, Diddy. And I knew him for a long time. When I, when I first became champ, I knew him. Puff is the biggest guy in the world. You know, you couldn't even get in this party. So the way I would get in this party is I show up with a camp. Don't Fox and I came. Watch Puff sitting there. So, <laughs> it's coming. I'm like, damn, it's crazy, man. Huh? So what I did was I would show up to the party in my little uh, in a little town car. This town, you know, I grabbed my town car so I could skirt. Puff the SUVs and the road, the Bentleys, the whole night. He get out. I get out too with a camera, the big cannon. Like, yo, Puff, I should document this. Shit. Yo, what's up, Playboy? <laughs> What, what, what you talking about? I said, no, I should get this, man. You, Fonz, were a whole nine. He says, uh, yeah, let him through. The entire internet is currently going crazy after Mike Tyson just stepped into the chat and spilled some major tea about the disturbing things that he saw at Diddy's freak-off parties. This came after a video resurfaced of Diddy playing with Mike's butt cheeks. He used to be a very close friend of Diddy back when Diddy was in his prime, so he saw everything firsthand and made sure to get as far away from Diddy as humanly possible before he also got sucked into that sick world. What's even scarier about this whole mess with Diddy is that we would have never known about the things that he was doing if Cassie didn't file that lawsuit to expose him. She accused him of repeatedly essaying her during the course of their 10 year relationship and making her go on adult websites specifically to scout for black male models so they would sleep with her while he recorded and touched himself. For some reason, he got a lot of pleasure from seeing Cassie get Getting pounded by other black men. Cassie claimed she used to be high on substances so she could dissociate herself while these men did these things. The lawsuit also detailed the time that Diddy forced himself into Cassie's apartment after they had dinner together and essayed her while she repeatedly said no and tried to push him away. She said he used to do stuff like this to her every single day, but everybody who witnessed it would remain quiet because they were scared of him. All these incidents led to her occasional memory loss, which she still suffers with today. Diddy settled the entire lawsuit just 24 hours after it was filed in the hopes of stopping it from escalating any further. But little did he know, the damage was already done. The whole situation encouraged more of his victims to come out, and they all accused him of similar things. He's got a pattern of constantly mistreating people and throwing money at them to make them shut up about it. But as I said before, this just didn't work out, because a lot more of his his victims have come out to file their own lawsuits, with one of them being just 17 years old at the time of the essay. While all this was going down, a lot of people were speculating that it wasn't going to be long before his male victims also came out, because for years now, there's been speculations about Diddy also essaying men, including him touching Justin Bieber and Usher while they were still teenagers. To New York City. And I lived with Sean Puffy Combs for a year. That's the crazy thing. Now, that yeah. was L.A. Reid's idea, right? We're sending New you York over to City. something called Puffy Flavor Camp. There you go. To learn <laughs> Flavor some... Camp. Yeah, Flavor Camp. Yeah, that's what it was called. And you're going to go to Puff Daddy's. He's going to... In the 90s. Do you understand what that's like? Puffy's place was like just filled with chicks and like nonstop, right? No, nah, not really. Come I mean, on. but did I, hey, it was curious. I got a chance to see some things. Yeah, but you were 13. What were you I seeing? I went there to see the lifestyle. Right. And, and I saw it. And it was <laughs> and it was but I don't know if I could indulge and understand what I was even looking at. It was it was pretty wild. It was and your see parents were Mary okay? J Blige. They didn't know nothing about this. <laughs> I was having a good time, you know what I mean? Does he have you doing any chores? Are you doing dishes at all? I mean, to keep you humble somewhat? Or are you just like, can you stay up till four in the morning with them and party? I mean, I could. I yeah. actually stayed up longer than them. Puff and Usher did have a situation. And that situation led Usher to the hospital. Now, I let Usher explain that to y'all. I let Usher tell that story. Let Usher mom explain that to you. And the hospital was in Scarsdale, New York. Well, it looks like people were not wrong because music producer Lil Rod also filed his own $30 million lawsuit accusing Diddy of essaying him. He also name dropped Meek Mill and Usher as some of the people who he had said that Diddy told him he slept with. In fact, Diddy's ex bodyguard leaked a very disturbing audio that he had recorded some years ago of Diddy pounding Meek at one of his freak off parties. In the audio, you can hear Meek literally screaming in 
severe pain as Diddy is clapping his cheeks, but he took it all in just because of opportunities that Diddy promised him in Hollywood. The ex-bodyguard in question who recorded and leaked the audio made an entire video narrating how it came about. He said it happened during one of Diddy's freak off parties and he decided to lean by the door to record what he was hearing because he was shocked to see Meek allowing Diddy to pound him like this. He said Diddy intentionally spiked everyone's drinks at the party so they would be too high and too drunk to know what was going on, but he didn't drink. That's why he was sober enough to witness what he and Meek were doing. Champagne was spiked, son. Like all the champagne was spiked. Everybody was passed the f out. I don't drink. I don't drink. So I was playing that shit off like I don't f drink. I smoke. Like I smoke and I had my own weed, but like everybody was passed out. Yo, did he had that man in the room? Look, yes. I put my ear to the f door and I brought the phone because Diddy started going in overdrive. I ain't know what the f was going on, but I just heard balls slapping against cheeks. I heard struggling to take i heard being like yeah daddy guy like when, when i when, when he started all that daddy this and daddy that and then i heard some hollering and struggling like yeah i kept the phone there and i recorded all this i was like this did he body kind of knew back in the day that meek mills and puff was a little too friendly anytime two rappers or two people in the industry come dressed up alike on more than one occasion. Now at this point, I'm convinced there ain't a single human being in this industry that's halfway decent. Like they all got these skeletons in their closet that they spend millions of dollars to make sure we don't know about. And just when we thought things couldn't get no messier than this, Mike Tyson got dragged into this whole conversation after a video of Diddy playing with his booty went viral. Now it all started when 50 Cent decided to be messy by reposting an old video of Diddy playing with Mike's butt in an inappropriate way. The video was already making its round on social media, but 50 made it go viral when he posted it on his page and captioned it, ha ha, look at Mike. Oh no, you're not gonna touch my ass buddy, lol. In the video, Mike and Diddy were sitting next to each other on a couch just before the interview cuts to a commercial break. Mike can be seen lifting Diddy's hand away from his cheeks and placing it on Diddy's lap. It turns out Diddy was fondling it and Mike was not feeling it. After Mike took his hands off, you could see how visibly angry and embarrassed that Diddy was. People definitely had a lot to say about this. Like this person who said, love how his smile was wiped out inside Instantly. He understood that if he kept it going, Mike would introduce him to his right fist. Another person said, you've got to tell him no. Caught in 4K, you can feel the embarrassment on Diddy's face. After all that started going viral, people began to do some digging. And that's when they found out that Mike had actually been spilling some major tea about Diddy's industry parties for quite some time. But nobody clocked it because we don't know how connected he was to Diddy. So during during an interview on the PBS podcast a couple months ago, Mike revealed that he and Diddy actually go way back, and he actually knew who Diddy was before he was even famous. No, um, just I knew him for a long time. Got it. And with you, he was chill. He was good. He was awesome guy. Yeah. Um, I knew him before he was um, Diddy. And I knew him for a long time. When I, when I first became champ, I knew him. I remember him. So, considering how long they've known each other, it means Mike definitely saw Diddy slowly rise to fame, and he got to participate in a lot of the parties that Diddy threw. In fact, Mike confirmed this himself when he said that Diddy used to throw these big parties that a lot of high-profile people would attend and do all kinds of things. He used to have crates when he used to have my after parties and stuff. Also when they were throwing parties. I remember this him. is when he was the CEO founder of Bad Boy. No, I don't Biggie. think he was Bad Boy yet. No, he really? wasn't him, Damon Dash, and all those guys. They weren't. They weren't on yet. 
There was even a part in the interview when the host, Bette David, said, So many people in music in Hollywood feared this guy Diddy, as if he's untouchable. To which Mike Tyson interjected to say, Oh, sugar daddy. It's almost as if Mike was holding back, but really wanted to say something. He just didn't want all the smoke that was coming his way with whatever he had to say. But it definitely won't be long before everything else comes out, because Diddy's home recently got raided by the feds for evidence and word on the street is, they are not gonna stop looking into Diddy until they've gathered enough physical evidence to throw that man in jail. But now I wanna know your thoughts. What do y'all think about Mike exposing Diddy? And do you think that Diddy was actually fondling Mike's cheeks as a gesture to join his freak offs? Y'all been knew what to do. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And don't forget to click here to watch this other very messy video.